I'm going to be doing a demonstration of um, asters, okay? Asters being a late summer, early fall flower. And they usually are in blue to pink or purple tones, um, depending on the variety that you get. They don't have very um, attractive looking leaves or stems. Uh, they mostly mound up and you see the, the mound of, of flowers and petals and everything. So uh, that's primarily what I'm going to focus on, but I will stroke the stems and leaves just so you can see them. Okay, so let's get overhead here and we will get started with the demo. Okay, and I've got my I've got just a little piece of, this is eight and a half by 11 scrapbook paper, just a little pattern in the background um, that I like to paint on sometimes instead of plain white. It's just a little more fun sometimes to do that. Okay, so I've laid out some colors here and I'm going to be using uh, primarily a number eight flat to stroke these petals because they're very thin, delicate looking petals, okay? And so the colors I've got laid out are um, cobalt blue, violet pansy, wicker white, magenta, daffodil yellow, sap green, yellow ochre, okay? And then I have some floating here, medium here in case I need it. So I'm gonna get my eight flat damp and lay it on paper towel, let the water run off. And I'm gonna come and pick up um, some violet pansy right here. I'm gonna stroke next to that puddle and get it about half loaded. Then I'm gonna come over here next to my white and load the white on the other half of my brush. Okay, so we're side stroking the color for a smaller brush because they're just too small to do a double load. So we can stroke next to the color and work it in, okay? Now, I want to tint this just a slight blue, so I'm gonna come get some of this cobalt and work that into my purple my violet pansy. And it's just going to tint that a little bit of blue. And I think we're good to go. All right. So to stroke um, this aster, the first thing you want to do is decide where your center is going to be. And so I would usually put like a little dot or something there. Now, every time I'm moving away from the camera, I'm going to be picking up fresh color right over here. Okay, so let's get this so you can see both. All right, so fresh color. Now, when I want light color to show, I would angle my brush or orient my brush so that the light is coming last. I would have what we call leading with the dark color. But in this case, I want them to be more of the purple tone, so I'm gonna lead with the white and trail the dark behind, okay? So handle straight up and down. I'm gonna to touch right here. I'm gonna push slightly, light pressure, lift, and stand up to the chisel as I approach that center, okay? Very similar to a daisy, as I mentioned. And so to get a nice round shape, it's a good idea to think of like a clock face or a compass and we're gonna go um, opposite each other. Now, if I were to turn this paper, I was trying to do that so my hand wasn't getting in the way, but uh, turn this paper. So this would be 12, this would be six, and then nine, light pressure, okay? Notice how skinny that stroke is, okay? And then opposite that nine, we're gonna put in three, very light pressure. All right, so they're longer and they have, not longer than a daisy, but they are long-ish, okay? All right, so now what we do is we come back in between and we divide the sections. So handle still straight. This is where I get my hand in the way if I'm not careful. So here, push slightly, chisel, stand up. All right, divide that. Now these are pretty packed and kind of run over the top of each other. So it's perfectly fine if they're not you know, completely away from each other. So you can come right in here, in here, in here. Okay, so it's just the same stroke each time, filling in between those gaps. And then you can just turn your paper or whatever surface you're working on each time you wanna come and do the next one, okay? So slight pressure. 
and stand to the chisel every time you come into the center. Okay, so I'm just going to keep working around here, filling in all these little segments. Okay, I'm going to add just a little more white to my brush and kind of knock that purple down because it is a little bit strong. All right, and let's see what that does for us. So we'll come right in here. There, that's a little better. Not quite so strong. Remember, the beauty of one-stroke painting is that there are no mistakes. You can always stroke over a stroke that you're not happy with. Okay, so we're going to finish this out with a few more strokes. And there we go. Now, it's looking a little squarish to me. So you can always come back and kind of round out some of these strokes so they don't look so square. That's better. Okay. All right, there we go. So that's what um, a standard facing you uh, aster would look like from the petal perspective. And we're going to add the centers in just a minute. But I want to share with you another way to look at one, which would be from the side. And I'm going to change up the color too while I'm at it. So I'm going to come over here and side stroke a little magenta. Okay and tone this just a little more towards our pink. Grab a little white, come over here, stroke the magenta while you have this purple, this violet pansy on here, okay? Actually, I'm sorry, I want to get the cobalt. There we go. All right, so I'm just going to keep coming and stroking that now. So let's look at this from more of a side angle where you have um, the petals kind of at a um, leaning to the right direction. So I've got my center right here, okay? And we're gonna stroke our top and bottom, our widest angle, right? And it's gonna be leaning toward me. And so the back is going to be shorter petals and the front is going to have longer petals, okay? Did I do that? No, I'm sorry. That's wrong. The, so leaning, I always get this mixed up. Leaning towards me, I'm, I'm looking at my picture. Um, you're going to have longer petals in the back and shorter petals in the front. That's the deal. Let me get just a little medium in here. There we go. Okay, so skinny petals. Maybe a little more of that blue in here. There we go. So I just want to make sure you can still see chisel, stand up. Okay, and you can add some of that back into those too. All right, now, so let's finish with our back petals. We're going to give them just a slight curve as I'm stroking these. Let's get a little more white. Slight curve coming to the right. There we go. Just kind of fill those in, all right? So we've got a magenta and cobalt on one side of our brush and white on the other. So now coming around this front half so that it's um, tipping, like it's tipping towards you, the front petals are going to get shorter. So here you're going to have um, a little bit shorter and you're going to gradually get, so the center one right here is going to be the shortest in orientation to the viewer. So you're going to stand that up just like that. And then you'll fill in getting shorter with a slight curve as you come around to that spot and then as you move back away from it you're going to get slightly longer see that so now it looks like it's tipped when i put the center in you'll see that a little better okay so let's finish up and we're just going to do a little bud to go with this so I'm going to continue using my blend that I have on my brush, which is the magenta and cobalt on one corner or one half and the other half is white. Okay. 
So we're going to do a little bud right here. Okay. And so I'm just going to touch and pull back. Right there and here. Now I'm going to reverse my colors. Remember I talked about how I'm leading with the light and trailing the dark behind to get these. Now I want to reverse my colors and have the lighter stroke in front coming um, down a little further, still coming to the same point. And this way it looks like you're looking like at the back side of those petals standing up and you can see the front and the back uh, oriented towards you. Okay. And this has not opened yet. All right. So there we have three different looks and now I'm going to switch colors and I'm going to let those petal colors set up and I'm going to come over and just show you what the stems and leaves are going to look like. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I've, I've cleaned my eight flat. I'm going to come right in here and I'm going to pick up and load both sides with sap green. Okay. And then I'm going to come right over here and side stroke some of this daffodil yellow. All right. So sap green, daffodil yellow, Okay, so first thing I want to do is find my center of my flower and then come outside the petals. I'm leading with the light, trailing the dark behind, and I'm just going to pull a chisel stroke, no pressure, down with a curve like that. Okay, same thing here. I'm going to find my center, come to the outside, and so you're just lining up with that center so you're not having your stem off cattywampus to the um, center of the flower because the stems come from behind the center. Okay. And then for this one, I'm just going to do three little short strokes right here. Chisel, chisel, and chisel like that. They all come to a V to grab that bud right there. And oops, a little heavy on that stroke. Pull that down. Okay. So there we've got our three little stems. And usually, like I said, when you see these, um, like in a potted bunch um, or out of the ground, they're in a mound, so you don't really see the stems, but this is what they would look like. So they have little skinny, slender leaves, and so they're kind of inconsequential. Um, oops, there we go. Sorry about that. My hand got in the way. So we're going to push, slide, and stand up. Okay, I'm going to grab just a little bit of white. I want to tone these down just a little. And there we go. All right, and maybe pull one of those up. Like that. And I wasn't happy with the way this stem grab happened here, so I can just pull a little slender leaf right there. Hi, Pat. Thanks for coming on. Okay, so just some little skinny leaves for these asters, all right? And then you would have a bunch of these in your bouquet. All right. So now, yes, they are very delicate looking and I just, I think they're very pretty. Um, can't grow them down here. I think the sun would kill them. So now we want to pounce our centers and there's a couple of different looks for centers that I've seen. Um, some are more um, of a bright, almost orangey looking uh, yellow and some are a, a more of a bright, bright yellow. Okay. So I'm going to show you first the bright yellow. I'm going to get, I've got a small scruffy right here, a little quarter inch scruffy. We use this dry. I'm going to tap into daffodil yellow on one half and then come over to my yellow ochre and pounce the other half with yellow ochre. Okay. A little more daffodil pounce next to the yellow ochre. All right. And now on the front of this, daffodil yellow edge, I'm just going to tap into a tiny bit of white. All right. 
And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to work, do this side view one here. Okay. And so we do this, we tap the dark. This is kind of a big center. So you're pouncing straight up and down. You're going to, with the light color up and the dark color down, create a little oval shape. And the oval is um, landscape oriented to left the top and or left and right of this flower. Okay. So that would be, and I'm just going to get a touch more white and come right in here in the center and kind of highlight that up. Okay. Not quite done with that. Now I'm, I noticed I went a little wide on my center and this should be fairly dry. So I can come right in here with a clean damp brush and take that right out. There we go. That's better. Sometimes these little quarter inch brushes can be still even a little too small for small flowers. And so you have to kind of tip them back on one half and do one color and then tip them forward on the other half and do the other color. There we go. Okay. So now can you kind of see how it's oriented tipping towards you with the shorter petals in the front? Okay. All right, so next thing I want to do, I'm going to show you this kind of orangey looking center. And so on the yellow ochre corner or half of my brush, I'm going to pounce into some magenta. And that yellow and magenta is going to create this little bit of an orangey look. Get the other half with daffodil yellow. Okay, and we're going to come right up here. And this one's facing us, all right? So we're going to kind of pounce in a circle with the light color to the top, half, okay? So see how that looks there? And then I can get, again, just a little bit of white on that daffodil yellow edge and highlight that, okay? So very simple to do these. And then the last thing I wanna do, I'm gonna get my script liner with, and I'm gonna get that wet. I'm gonna come and pick up some white right here and some of this daffodil yellow and kind of brush mix those together. <laughs> I thought I was on the camera and I wasn't. And so we're brush mixing white and daffodil yellow. So it's a little bit paler and I want more white in there. Okay. So I've got some water in my brush, just a little, and then I'm going to roll as I come out and we're going to come right into the top of this center from this, of this aster right there. And we're going to touch and pull in a little more white with the tip of this brush. They have just these little stamens that come out. Okay. So make those curve left and right, and that's what they look like. All right, now I can come in here and get that same mix of magenta and yellow, and I can do a few of those on this one too. And so you use the opposite color, the contrasting color in each section. So if this is the orange, I'm going to use the yellow down here so that those show up. And above I use the orange blend. Okay. So once you get those done, then you can come in with your kiss daughter and I'm going to get some white on the end of that. And we're going to come right in here. We call this a kiss daughter because of the end shape looks like a little Hershey's kiss. And you can either dip and dot white or yellow, daffodil yellow, depending on what's going to show up better. Okay. And don't overdo this. Just a few little dots is all you really need. All right. Um, on the other one, let me wipe that off and I'm going to get the magenta, the mix of magenta and yellow, and I can come right up here and dot a few of those. There we go. Grab some of that daffodil and come down here. All 
okay? So just a very different looking little flower, like I said, I believe is part of the mum family. And so if we back up just a hair, and there we go. So those are your asters for fall.